Hello audience. In this video we're finally going to start getting into the paint. Now as you can see the body has been painted already. Now I'll show you the step-by-step -step process that we went through to get from the old finish to this later in this video. First I want to talk about the color. Now this is Andalusite Blue which is a factory color. This was available on this particular year body type and trim level. The owner picked it out and if you're wondering why we painted the firewall almost immediately and waited so long and everything else, it's because the painter wanted to paint a big surface of it to get an idea of what it's going to look like, just in case it's not quite what the owner imagined before we go through the trouble of painting everything. And the owner approved of it, so we went with that color. This is generally not a problem when you're sticking to factory colors because professional stylists have already gone through the trial and error of making them work, but this can be a problem if you're choosing custom colors because when you're looking at a little color chip in a book or if you're seeing it on a completely different car sometimes you just have no idea what it's going to look like until it's done and it's too late then. Another big problem is cars from this time have so many other colors in them too. Like for example the fenders are black, the wheels are whatever color they're going to be, the interior Depending on the body type, it can be black, brown, tan, gray, anything like that. If it's an open car, the top can be black or tan, and all of these need to go together with the body color. And I've seen this before. You look at stock factory body colors that may look plain, drab, almost disgusting. You put it together with the rest of the colors and it comes alive, it looks good. And the exact opposite can happen. A color that you think looks good alongside everything else can look terrible. And in addition to all that, with the cost of paint and the amount of skilled labor there is in painting a car, you really want to do the job right the first time. So fortunately, looks like we have. The owner likes the color, I like the color, we all like the color, and it's a big part of this build I don't have to worry about anymore. One little detail we did was paint the wheel wells black to match the fenders. It's a little detail a lot of restorers never get around to and this was done originally and it's very important especially if the body is like a bright color like yellow or something. If you see it underneath inside the fender it can look kind of funny. This is the right front door and this will be our example piece. The first thing to do is to look for dents. They're easiest to find when there's shiny paint over them, so we're taking advantage of the old paint that's already there. Ironically, this seems to be the only panel on the car that has no dents. Next, removing the old paint. This car was painted with acrylic lacquer. The problem with this is lacquer will turn into a liquid when in contact with solvents so paint remover will not lift it off, just make a big mess. Another option is to grind it off, but that's a dirty job and takes a long time. The body man chose to brush acetone over the surface and scrape it off. The acetone makes it easier to scrape. That took most of the paint off. The rest is being removed with a rag and more acetone. I'll point out that he's doing all of this on a cold rainy day because acetone evaporates fast in warm weather. Anything else is ground off using a 40 grit disc with a soft backing so it leaves a smooth finish. With a reasonably clean surface now we'll start going after the dents. As I said, the right door has nothing wrong with it so now we're looking at the left. A few small dents and one big one at the bottom that is some kind of old body filler that's pitted and rough with primer or glazing putty over that. This bodywork was probably done in the late 60s or 70s. The remaining filler is being ground off, this time using a more aggressive disc. Now we'll fill the dents in with new body filler. Now because it's such a cold day, he's going to microwave the filler for about 15 seconds to make it softer and easier to work with. Drawing time can be adjusted by the amount of catalyst used, to a point, but it's best to stick to manufacturer's recommendations. 
Too little or too much catalyst can cause problems later on. A little heat is used to help it dry because it's still a cold day. After it is cured, he's sanding with 80 grit wet sandpaper. Wet sanding keeps the dust out of the air. With satisfying results, a coat of primer is applied and is now being sanded with 220 grit. The trick is to try to equalize the low spots with the high spots without sanding completely through the primer. However, it can be touched up later if that does happen. The final primer coat is applied. This time before sanding, a guide coat is sprayed on. This is just white paint which will make the low spots easier to see, and all of it will be sanded off. And now the final sanding, this time with 400 grit. Once satisfying results happen, it will be sent out to be painted. And that's done. Next step is to sand and polish the paint. This is a few weeks later, and I'd like to point out that even though the paint is catalyzed, it takes a few weeks to fully cure. Waiting that long to sand it makes the paint harder to sand, but the shine will last longer. He's using 2000 grit paper and using dish soap with water as a compound, which makes it easier to sand and will leave a smoother finish. Next step is to buff the sand scratches out. He's using a coarse buffing wheel and clean cut rubbing compound. Small areas that you can't get to with the wheel are done by hand. The final step is polishing with a fine wheel and premium polishing compound. He's not using much compound because heat caused by friction of the wheel will also help to bring out the shine. Modern urethane responds well to this. Such heat could, however, destroy a traditional lacquer paint job, so it's important to know what type of paint you're working with. And it's finished, ready to go on. Now I'm going to get back to work on the front seat carriage. Now I said these sides, they're not in the best condition, so I've decided to replace them. So that's what I'm going to do next. Now here's the old wood, and as you can see, it's not in the best condition. However, it's still holding its original shape, so what I plan to do is just use it as a pattern, mark it out on this new plywood, cut it out, drill holes where the originals are, and throw them on. And it should be that simple. Yep, it really was that easy. Well, that's it for this video. Not much this time because in the past couple of weeks about all we've done is wait for paint to dry. However, this was a really big step forward and now we can move on to final assembly. As you probably noticed, the fenders and splash aprons have already been installed and now the body man's currently working on aligning the doors and the hood. Once that's all done, we can bolt everything down permanently and then start on the interior. And all that will happen in future videos. So until then, thank you for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, dislike, whatever. And I'll see you in the next video.